This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. My name is Richard, and today I'm going to be going over the long awaited Gold Paladin Gurgit V series deck profile featuring both Gurgit and Percival, which is still, still trying to put that together because it's finally happened, but here we are. So. It works, and I'm happy. I love it. Gurgit and Percival in the same deck. I'm just going to jump right into it because I'm a loss for words for how excited I am that this deck exists. So our starter is the very infamous Knight of Early Dawn, Coel. So I cannot wait to be saying this for like another three years because that's basically what I did. <laughs> All right, so gets you a quick shield, draw when you ride on it. Quick shield when your opponent's at grade one. Typical starter, but it's Coel. It's Coel. It's great. All right. Next up to the main event. Four copies of Sunrise Ray Knight Gurgit. So Gurgit's skill is if uh, your opponent's at grade three during your turn, uh, all of your this unit and all of your units placed by card abilities get 5k for each of your Excel markers. So the fact that it gets 5k for every additional mark you have just makes it great because it can just swing by itself if it needs to. Just a really nice power buff. And the other skill, really great, is once per turn, um, either during the battle phase when it attacks or during the guard step, you can count plus one, look at the top five cards of your deck, and you call two from among the five to your regret circles. If it's during your opponent's turn, you call them to the guard circle instead. So you basically either get to have a really nice, like kind of like pick your unit from the guard top five, like Slamy Flare. Basically get a Slamy Flare for the Counterblast one. And during your own turn, you can basically get like a, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, I'd say it's kind of like Heavenly Logger, but it's better because instead of top seven call one, it's top five call two. So that's really, really cool. This card's great. I love this Gurgit. And he's got a horse. He's got a horse this time. You know, from a bird to a horse. Upgrades, people. Upgrades. Anyways, that's Gurgit. I love it. The whole Gurgit aesthetic is back. He he looks like he lost some weight. Man's working on himself. It it's it's, an, it's a little nice little end to, to 2020, I would say. Alright. Next up, Percival, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival, my favorite card in this game. I don't know if you guys could tell or not. <laughs> so Percival, double R, but he's great because his skill is still better than what it was when he was made in Legion format, and he was still one of my favorite cards in Legion format. So let's just go right into it. Vanguard skill, Kant. Continuous. All your units on additional rear circles get 5k. That's pretty that's pretty dang good. Alright. So next skill is Vanner Rear when it's placed. Um and you have a grade three Vanguard. You counter blast one, discard a card from your hand, get an imaginary gift Excel, then search your deck or your drop zone for an oath liberator aglavail and call it to rear. And then you shuffle your deck. Is there anything else that I'm missing from this? Oh, and then you can only use the ability from this name once per turn. So you can only use the skill of Bluish Flame Liberator Percival once per turn. So cannot stack it because that would be super freaking good. <laughs> you could. Um, oh, notification. Um, so. This card, the synergy between these two is, is obvious because addition gives you Excel circles, gains gives things powers when they're on Excel circles, works on van and rear. Great, love it. It's so good. And then Aglavale is just a great card too. So the fact that we are at the Percival Gurgit hybrid is what makes the deck for me. Being tier one is just is just the cherry on top. All right, next up for grade threes. I decided I'm going to be running only three copies of Battlefield Storm Cybermore. Uh, this is mostly just to make up for space, but obviously there are things in my deck that I can just kind of mess around with just to make up for that space. So 
not that big of a deal to kind of make up, but three Sagamore is fine for me. So when it's placed in your hand, you kind of Soul Blast one, sorry. Soul Blast one, draw a card, then you call a card from your hand. So this is just for proccing those abilities that when they're placed by card ability, get that extra power off. Drawing cards is also nice. Sagamore is always kind of stuck around these Gold Paladin decks. It's just a really good skill. So Sagamore, three copies. Dealer, you probably want to run four just because this helps you proc off so many abilities. You have plenty of soul to work with in this deck, so have at it. But for the sake of just space, I'm running three. Speaking of space, this is what I'm making that space up for. I am running two copies of Mox Slash Dragon. So Mox Slash Dragon is basically there for the aggressiveness that you can do with this deck. So Mox Slash skill is when it attacks Van or Rear, you can bless one and you call a card from your hand to the rear guard circle and this unit gets 5k. So the whole purpose of this is to kind of combo off more attacks during the battle phase and because units called by card abilities get power thanks to Gurgit, you're gonna be extending those plays without having to worry about too much about your opponent getting damage triggers and still being able to hit. So this card really helps with applying pressure and I decided I wanna run two copies because I wanna see this more often than just the one copy. If you guys were around for my first Incandescent Lion Blond Ezel standard deck profile, this card was like the MVP of the deck. I was running three copies of it. It was like four Blonde, four Sagamore, three Mox Slash. It was, it was pretty funny. But Mox Slash really made the deck help with those extended plays. And yeah, but if you guys really don't wanna run Mox Slash, Honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't. This card is literally what helps the deck win, in my opinion. Uh, you can tone this down for more Sagamores. You can tone this down for other grade twos you might want. But just because it doesn't have a gift, if that's what you're worried about, for whatever reason, but Mox Slash is great. Please run some Mox Slash in your Gurga deck. I've seen lists that even run four Sagamore and three Mox Slash together because that's how good these grade threes are. But if you're worried about not having enough shield or being too grade three clogged. I feel like this is a good ratio to have. So two mock slash. That was it for our grade threes. We're gonna move on to grade twos. We got four copies of Oath Liberator Aglovail as seen on the mat here. So Aglovail skill is also great. So main thing is it is a call target for Percival. So deck thinning, pulling it out of the deck is nice. The other skill is Vanguard Circle, when it's placed, kind of bless one, look at top three cards, call one among them to the rear, the other two go to the bottom of the deck. So it's like it's traditional skill from before, except without being Liberator exclusive, and without it working on just rear, now it works on just van. So this is your ride target, um, helping you proc, you know, fill your board early, uh, maybe helping you kind of be a little more aggressive early game. So that's helpful. It's also just nice because, you know, 9k vanillas in an Excel deck kind of hurt. So if you can make up for that, you know, by being a little more aggressive and hitting against force numbers, Aglovale helps. But of course, you're not always guaranteed red Aglovale, but it's there. The other skill, which is really, really good, is Rearguard Circle. When it attacks, you choose another Rearguard, suck it to soul. This gets 10k, and at the end of that battle, you bounce it. So that's really nice because you can bounce this back to your hand and if you got mock slash on the board and other stuff for like calling you can have this be your final call target from your hand and you can swing with it again for for another minimum 19 most likely in between 29 to 34 without before triggers because of Gurgit's skill so being able to kind of do that traditional like bermuda triangle where you go bounce from hand call it back bounce from hand, call it back. Aglovale is really cool. There's a grade three that came in this set that does the same thing. Uh, and it also gets a 10,000 point shield if your Vanguard is grade three. So that's also a really cool card to have if you want to be more defensive, if you really don't like Mock Slash for whatever reason, uh, just because the other card I'm talking about has a gift on it. You can run that if you want to do more like extended plays and more soul filling, but I really don't think you need that. Aglovel is sustainable enough and it's 
call target by Percival. Thank you, Bushy, for bringing back Percy and Angleville. All right, next up, more MVPs of the deck. So Wonder Ezel is still around. So Ezel is still technically in the deck, which is funny. So what um, Wonder Ezel does is when it's placed from Rearguard Circle, I'm just going to go with that skill first because that's the important one. When it's placed, you call a card from your hand. So obviously the whole point of this is you're supposed to be able to call it during the battle phase. You use Gurgit skill. From the top five, you pick one of these. You call it. It gains all that power from the Excel markers. Then using its ability, you call another card from your hand, which was called by a card ability. That unit gets power. So if you want, if you had multiple of these in your hand and you got one through Gurgit skill, you call it. Procket skill, call this from your hand. Procket skill, call another thing from its hand. So that's how you can extend your attacks. And the fact that Gurgit is also giving them power as this is happening is really, really cool. So Wonder Ezel you have to run for in this deck. If you want to be really gimmicky for fun, there is a build where you do run um, Howl just to get to Superior Eye, the one copy of Blonde Ezel in your deck just to get even more Excel markers as fast as possible so that by the time you're on Grigate, you already have three Excel markers as opposed to the traditional two if you have Percival in hand. So that's the thing you can do. All those Howls are kind of dead later in the game, but for the most part, your grade ones aren't really doing much anyway, so it's fine if you really want to go that route. But for consistency's sake, we're not running that in this build. We're not running the one blonde Ezel. But I will show you a build for it in the future because I do want to try it out for fun. But yeah, so the other skill, of course, for uh, Wonder Ezel is if you have Howl on rear, you Soul Blast one, retire the Howl, ride blonde Ezel from your deck, and then that's how you're on grade three during your grade two turn. Oh, and the Ezel has to lose a drive check. But yeah, you know, grade two turn. Got to make it fair. So lastly, I'm running Tex. So... I did one of each. I did one Paramour and one of, what is your name? Berengaria, Berengaria, Bernie. <laughs> um, so the reason I did this is because I just want to run Paramour. If I really didn't care that much, I would just run two of these because you want to be able to counter charge a lot, especially if you're going to play against players that know what damage denial is. So if your opponent knows how to play damage denying games, you want to have access to counter charge a lot. So I would usually run two of this, but I want this deck for me personally. So I want Paramore because I like Paramore. I got, I got some memories with this card. So uh, Vanner Rear Paramore skill is Cannon Blast 1, Call it Grade 2 or less from your hand, and then you draw a card. So this works as a good ride target. Um, typical card targets are probably going to be Barangaria or Dindrain, so you can counter charge after you, you know, play that counter blast. So that basically you're calling a card and then drawing a card. Basically, you're doing a Sagamores because you're going to soul blast and counter charge. So it's a very long-winded way of doing a Sagamore skill. But the other skill is also really cool. It's when it's placed by a card ability, this gets five uh, power and five shield, or five shield basically, because if you're going to call it the guard circle. So it's a good call target with Gurgit's defense skill, gains that five shield, gains five power, so it's aggressive in case you need that extra power. Um, but it's a search target for Jeffrey as well. So instead of just having the minimum four with Gurgit, now I have a fifth target potentially just to help me filter through the deck. Uh, I am basically sacrificing the extra counter charge for the Paramore, but I'll live with it because we are running four Dindrain. Counter charge seems okay for now. If I really feel like I'm like, I need more counter charge, I'll ditch Paramore and I'll get another Burn Garia. So Burn Garia's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you do one of the following. So you can either counter blast to soul charge or you can soul blast to counter charge. So you're mostly gonna use the second one. The first one I feel like is a more aggravating kind of thing because you know, soul, but uh, you're mostly gonna use it for the second skill. So that's cool. Yeah, it's really, really, really good grade two for Gurgit. So that's why I'm debating whether to up this to two or not. Um, but for now, the one copy I will work with because you want to be kind of balancing in a way. So, yep, that's it for grade twos. Next up, we're going to grade ones. 
four copies of Gorbo Duck. He's back. So Weak Goals finally got their uh, Grade 3 Searcher Strike Fighter Retrain thing. So during your turn, if you have called two or more things, it gets 5k. Very easy to pull off. That was kind of implied from the get-go. We kind of knew it was going to be a Unite kind of thing. Call two things, you get 5k. Easy. Other skill, traditional Great Thief Searcher thing. When it's placed uh, from hand, look at top five, look for a three, add it to hand. If you've found a three, discard a card. So we want four because all of these things are needed. <laughs> all these grade threes are really important to the deck's function and you want to keep finding them. So you want to find Mox Slash, you want to find Sagamore, so you want to look for these cards to help pull off these combos. So that's what Gorbodek is mostly there for. Um, it's also, you know, you can ride it, and then you search for Gurgit, and then you're on, you got your Gurgit for the game. So definitely run Gorbodek at four. Kind of speaks for itself. All right. Next up, uh, Countercharge Engine. We got four copies of Listener of Truth Dindrain. So Dindrain's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you can Soul Blast one, and you can choose one of the following two. You can either draw a card, or you can counter charge, and if you counter charge, you get 3k. You do not get 3k if you draw. I said it once. I'm not saying it again. Um, so it's the counter charge engine from the deck. You're most likely never going to use it for the draw just because you're counter blasting a lot. You have plenty of soul, and your hand is not really an issue when you're trying to just beat your opponent to death. Like, if you can either choose to draw a card or extend your attacks, I think I'm going to pick pick the latter, you know? So you're going to be countercharging as much as possible. And again, if your opponent knows what damage denial is, you're just going to want to have the insurance that you have a counter blast for the turn, especially since Gurgit's skill can be used on your opponent's turn. You might want that extra damage during your opponent's turn just in case you need that skill, that defensive skill. So you definitely want four Dindrain. So since we're cutting it tight on space, Lastly, for the grade ones, we're only running two copies of Jeffrey. Uh, I've seen lists that have cut this down to one. I can see why. It's kind of an okay card, and you only ride it, and that's pretty much it. But just for the sake of ride consistency, uh, I do have it at two. Um, I would say that if I were to drop this down to one, definitely pick up, <laughs> put in the space for another one of these for countercharging. Um, but what it does is Vanguard Circle only when it's placed, you look at the top seven and you search for Gurgit or Paramore and you add it to Hen. So that's why Paramore is in the deck for an extra target. If I really want to get like a grade two target to ride, if I'm grade two stuck, there's a chance that Jeffrey can find it for me. The other skill is just like Paramore's, it's when it's placed by a card, when it's placed by a card ability, 5k power or 5k shield. So that's really nice for this because that extra shield could help uh, you know, protect Gurgit if it needs to. Uh, and the 5k power, of course, you know, if you just want to have like more boosters, call it out through Sagamore's ability. Now you got a 13k beat stick, even though Gorbaduck basically does that for you anyways, but it's there. Um, love the art. Jeffrey doesn't draw cards anymore, but it's fine. He helps you search and filter. He's your grade one ride. I miss this card. I like I liked Jeffrey's art a lot back in the day. So, and his new art looks great. So yeah, two Jeffrey. Seems okay. Might cut it to one, but we'll see. That was it for the normal units. Now we're going to go on to triggers. So typically, you're most likely going to want to do eight crit for draw. Uh, I decided to do it a little different. It's all still crits and draws, but we're just doing uh, seven crit, when we're just mixing it up with the uh, the artworks. Ooh, in order so you guys can see. So yeah, we're just mixing it up with artworks. So we got seven crits. And then we're doing five draw. So of course you want your four PGs. So you got your Hail of Raider Marks and Player of the Holy Pipe, Jerry. It's back. Am I only doing this just to run a Jerry? Yes. But draws are still nice because you have skills like with Percival, this is your discard cost. If you really need like another beat stick just to call for the turn, you can call a draw trigger. <laughs> um, damaging draw triggers is always great. So you know what? I'd rather damage a draw than damage a crit. 
crits win games, but when it comes to damage checks, draws can make a whole game game changer. So seven crit, five draw, nothing game breaking here. I just like the ratio and I like Jerry. So that is why I chose this ratio for my deck. Typically, like I said, you're gonna go eight crit, four draw. My opinion on front triggers in this deck is they are unnecessary as you are gaining a bunch of power from Gurgit's skill. So I would rather get criticals than get more power. Um, and I'd rather have more control of like, you know, the fear of my opponent knowing, oh, I'm not just going to take one damage at a time. He might check a crit. So that's something that can be thought about when you're playing against someone. If they know you're just running fronts or if they don't see a single crit as you're playing through the game, you know, people are going to go like, oh, can I check your drop zone? And they see like, three different artworks for fronts they're going to be like oh you run basically mostly fronts so yeah um they're probably going to be more likely to take your vanguard might be a little like more less aggressive but also crits win games it's just the philosophy that i've always gone by crits win games oh and lastly of course new heal trigger i'm really not really it's not that big a deal but a little bit upset that it wasn't um the uh the uh, pharmacy witch because i know pharmacy witch was really ugly at the time and people really didn't like the artwork but i just thought it'd be funny if it came back but this is okay it's a completely new card not a retrain um what is your name exactly too you are fran trank sage purin that is an awful name so you know what we're still keeping the hideous trend but it's just the name not the artwork i think the artwork everyone is a big fan of so yeah you got four heels in the deck too so that was basically it for the deck profile. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm hoping to maybe get some games in with this deck, but uh, under the circumstances, it's really hard to go out and just kind of do things in general. So without taking proper precautions, but uh, I do enjoy just owning the deck and I'm happy that I have my boys back. It's, it's just this, this whole thing going on between these two is just so cool to me and i'm really happy that i own this deck so thank you guys for watching and i will see you all in the next video